A poll with 600 votes indicated that 61% of you are still learning or have yet to land switch heel flips. 30% of you put the trick under your belt somewhere between the 6th and 10th flip trick you learned. And 6% of you said it was somewhere between the 2nd and 5th flip trick you learned, while the remaining 4% of you trolled me and said it was the first flip trick you learned. The overall results of this poll might suggest that switch heels are somewhat of a deep cut in the flat ground flip trick world, but in competitive flat ground terms, and more specifically the sorely missed tournament formerly known as the Battle at the Barracks, switch heel flips are the fifth most common trick ever. With 554 total attempts by 175 different competitors throughout all 12 seasons. Switch heel flips are the fourth most consistent trick that involve a heel variation, behind the Nolly Varial Heel, Regular Heel Flip, and the number one Nolly Heel Flip, which has an 89.87% consistency out of 553 total attempts. These rankings remain almost the same if you look only at defensive consistency, a metric that better represents a trick's lethality in games of skate, due to the pressure factor of needing to land the trick to avoid a letter. The only difference between overall consistency and defensive consistency with respect to tricks having a heel flip variation component is that the Nolly Varial Heel edges out the Nolly Heel at 86.96% successful out of 23 defensive attempts. Technically, the Fakie Double Heel has a 1 for 1 defensive success rate, thanks to Tyler Peterson's clutch attempt about a third of the way through his championship battle with Jamie Griffin, but 1 for 1 is a misleading statistic when compared to other maneuvers with dozens of attempts to back their status. On the other end of that same list, and as we've discovered in the past, the Nolly Frontside Inward Heel Flip is the undisputed hardest trick to defend with at least one instance of a successful make defensively. The Nolly Front Inward has been attempted 21 times on defense, and Cody Cepeda remains the only skater in the tournament to land this trick after it was set offensively, in this case by Shane in Season 7 Round 2. There are 15 tricks with a heel variation that have never been landed on defense, but only two of those were attempted at least three times, which include the varial double heel flip, landed first by P-Rod two times in season six, first in the finals, and again in the epic championship battle where it just so happens he delivered T with the trick in both games. P-Rod is mainly responsible for heavily skewing the overall consistency of the varial double heel down to 30%, thanks to his four consecutive misses in just the Season 6 championship battle before finally landing it on turn 107. Moses Adams is the only other skater to land a varial double heel in a battle. Back in Season 7 against Seva Krutkov, and while Adams got Seva down to letter T on a bigger flip, it was Krutkov who would win thanks to Moses' botched second nightmare flip attempt on turn 69. The Nolly Backside 360 Big Spin Heel Flip was attempted thrice on defense and never landed, first by Shane O'Neill in Season 4 Round 2, which was that match's death blow thanks to Davis Torgerson who set the trick. Chris Cole gave Billy Marks K on the Nolly Back 3 Big Heel one season later in what I'm guessing was Season 5's very first Round 1 battle. Consistency-wise, switch heels are technically the 15th most successfully landed flip trick overall. Once we take out the shove tricks and 95% successful ollie north, it's also probably best to exclude 7 of the outlier flip tricks that have a 100% attempt to make ratio, because they've only been landed 2 times or less, and apart from maybe the fakey big double flip, almost all of them are entirely illegal on all counts. Therefore, switch heels rank 8th overall in consistency amongst flip trick types, behind the four previously mentioned heel flip variations, as well as nolly kick flips, fakie kick flips, tray flips, and of course, the most consistently landed flip trick of them all, the almighty kick flip, which boasts a 95.71% consistency throughout 12 completed seasons of Battle at the Barracks. With defense being a more accurate range of data to dissect consistency, considering competitors typically set a trick they're more comfortable and confident with in a game of skate, tricks with a high volume of defensive consistency should be considered even easier overall. In the span of 414 total battles completed, there are no flip tricks that have been landed more than twice and can also claim a 100% total success rate, let alone on defense. There's nothing too earth-shattering in the upper echelons of defensive consistency rankings compared to overall consistency with both offense and defense, including the switch heel flip, 
which has a slightly lower 84.09% defensive consistency from 264 attempts versus its overall consistency of 87.18%. A pure switch heel flip has yet to officially end a battle at the barracks game of skate, but some fiendish derivations have plagued the tournament's history, including Luan's switch heel body varial revert to win season 11. Switch double heel flips have ended four separate battles, first in season 4 when Ronnie Krager lost to Davis Torgerson in round 3. Season 7 saw two round 2 battles end on a switch double heel, with the unforgettable Cepeda O'Neill showdown, as well as the Holt Smith matchup thanks to a questionable referee approval from Seva Krutskov. Season 9 round 2 was the last time a switch double heel ended a battle, thanks to Aramis Hudson punching Blake Carpenter in the soul with the trick. No less than 117 heel flip related death blows have taken place. Comprised of 60 unique tricks that require a heel flick and make up nearly 30% of all death blows ever in Battle at the Barracks. The most potent heel flip variation to take the form of a death blow is the switch frontside heel flip, ending 8 total battles in 6 different seasons. Donovan Strain was the first victim of the switch front heel back in Season 1, Round 2, versus Eric Costin. Season 2, Round 2 found P-Rod beating Gilbert Crockett on the trick. Season 3 had three switch front heel death blows. First, when Corey Kennedy got away with some toe touch visible even in 480p against Jimmy Cow in Round 1. Again, when Tori Pudwell beat Marty Morosky in Round 2. And thirdly, when David Gonzalez became P-Rod's second switch front heel victim in round three. Season five was when the sixth instance of a switch front heel resulted in ending a battle, specifically when Jimmy Carlin popped the hell out of the trick and barely beat Ryan Pierce. Shondi Khan lost to Costin on a switch front heel in season seven round one after being harassed by Thousand Oaks California City Council member Mikey Taylor. You going headphones? Is that okay? No, yeah, dude, that, okay. that just fucked him up. That's like saying, "Hey, is that what you're wearing to school today?" No, it's like, hey, are you gonna eat all that? Do I look okay? Do I look fat? Don't do worry that? about yeah, this. Man. All right, we're ready. Wait a second. How do you say your name exactly? Uh, Burberry Jerry is the eighth and most recent recipient of the switch front heel death blow, thanks to Sunny Soljic's delivery in round one of season twelve back in July 2021. In terms of the fundamental flip tricks that make up the straight eight at Battle at the Barracks, switch heel flips are the fifth easiest trick to defend of the octuplet, with 222 successful defensive maneuvers out of 264 total defensive attempts. Believe it or not, switch kick flips are only 79% successful on defense in the tournament, and are therefore technically the hardest trick of the straight eight flip tricks to defend. As stated before, 175 different skaters have been involved one way or another with the switch heel flip in the tournament we all used to love and miss very much. 70% of those skaters have a perfect consistency with the trick, but only 12 of the 175 competitors have been able to maintain that record with 6 or more successful attempts overall. Climbing even higher on the switch heel rankings, three skaters and three skaters only have been able to sustain a 100% consistent resume, which is an exclusive club of Cody Cepeda, Chris Joslin, and Paul Rodriguez. Cody and Chris are tied at 13 for 13 switch heels each, but P-Rod, the switch messiah, is in another galaxy with a pristine 23 for 23 attempt to make ratio. Stats are cool and all, but what about switch heels done with style? Based on my most recent memory, John Delo's ender from his November 2021 Red Tiger part is worth mentioning as a formidably noteworthy, massive switch heel done in the streets with flawless execution. The first angle was horribly shot though, thanks to the other filmer's ass blocking out half the damn flip. Nige's switch heels are actually pretty dank, if you can get past his athletic aesthetic. The upstanding gentlemen of the slap message boards have engaged in jovial discussion on the best switch heels done in the streets, which originated as a thread in 2011 and includes a link to what appears to be a now defunct skate site called Stomped that lists their top 10 switch heels from the mid to late 2000s era. This list includes P-Rod and Nija, along with Jerry Sue from his 2010 Stay Gold part, Bastian Salabanzi in Really Sorry, Pete Eldridge, Stevie Williams, Tony Tave, Josiah Gatlin, Antoine Dixon from Baker Has a Death Wish, 
and Mike Moe's ender from his forecast part. The pals at Slap made sure Kelly Hart didn't get left out of the switch heel conversation either, and rightfully so. Damn, son. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man?